So I think I'd like to open up the platform of, um, does anybody have any pressing questions regarding spiked or spikeless shoes, which ones uh, you should consider while playing golf? If anybody has any, put in the chat, or if anybody just raise your hand, and you can ask a question. That'd be awesome. And I'll help answer them for you. And I have some uh, some shoes to show you and the different versions of spiked and spikeless, so we can go through some of those examples. Work against them. Does somebody have a question? Let's see your chat. All right, one of the, uh, let me just start off this way. Um, hundreds of thousands of shoes. And one of the biggest choices we got to make sometimes is whether we want spikeless shoes or spike shoes in our collection. Excuse me, one second, I'm about to sneeze. And, you know, probably 10 years ago, the choice was pretty easy for consumers because Either, most of the shoes were spike shoes and it was interesting that a lot of the golf courses as everyone pretty much knows started to ban spike because of what they did to the greens um it was just atrocious and greens keepers didn't like that so it's kind of interesting how t technology has evolved and has moved from spike shoes to spikeless and i see the trend that there's a lot more spikeless shoes being offered more than ever before so what's the difference between a spike shoe and, a, and spikeless so a spike shoe has these cleats on it uh, i'm not sure if you can see this here but typically these spike shoes were designed to give you more traction especially in wet conditions or hilly conditions damp conditions because you wanted as much traction as you could in those in that type of environment. The spikeless shoe was really just kind of, you know, just designed that you can just, you know, this is an echo shoe that you can see here. It was just designed that you could wear typically on and off the golf course where you didn't have to take off your shoes. Or in some cases, um, you know, when going to the clubhouse, um, some some clubhouses required you that you would be sorry some clubhouses did not permit you wearing spike shoes in there so you'd have to change your shoes and this allowed us to you know wear the shoes from the golf course right into the clubhouse to the 19th hole spikeless shoes have come a significant way with performance in giving us the traction that we are we're looking for with regards to compared to spike shoes. And I'm going to go, I'm a little bit over the, over the place, but I'm going to show you, this is the new Adidas 360 22 shoe. So this here, they do have spikes on it, but these are not removable spikes. These are built right into the sole. So these are kind of cool because these are lap permitted on the golf courses, but yet gives us that extra traction for Pete, you know, for anyone that's looking for that extra traction. Um, so why go a spike shoe versus a spikeless shoe? Well, uh, being in Arizona, we really don't need spike spike shoes because most of the con you know the conditions are typically dry for the most part. In Canada, where I play golf, um, sometimes having a spike shoe is you know can be important because we have a little bit more hills, we have a little bit more rain. Sometimes it's wet, and we like to play golf in those in those conditions because the season is very short so again which one do you choose i think nowadays i if you if you um most people are trending towards the spikeless shoe but i would caution which spikeless shoes to get i think in my opinion you know when choosing a spikeless shoe choose one where the manufacturers put a lot of research and development into creating that type of shoe and here's a great example uh, this is the footjoy pro sl which is totally spikeless it has like these little small, like little nubs here i don't know if you can see that really well but this shoe was really engineered from footjoy to be worn by 
a lot of professional golfers on the PGA Tour. And this was their number one shoe on the PGA Tour. And it was totally spikeless. So this shoe gave the players all the performance and traction that they were looking for that was that they used to have in a spike shoe um, to, like this traditional foot joy spike shoe. So the technology has come a long way. I mean, when I wore this and I was climbing up a hill, uh, first when looking at it, I didn't think there would be much traction, but I couldn't believe how much traction I was absolutely getting walking up a hill. I felt like a goat, like just totally like, um, felt full support, like I total grip that I was like fully surprised. Now, when you see something like this, this is from Adidas. I mean, there is some kind of traction there, but it is really not designed to give you the performance of something of this caliber. So that's, you know, it's caution is really looking at the sole and, and their grip pattern that they have. Um, you know, they're just, some of these are just designed just to, you know, you know, use on and off the golf course, but not really the traction that you probably really want, especially like in, on hills or damp conditions or in traps. I, I, I just can't see it. Um, another good example of something that looks amazing is the G4 shoe, but their spike, um, uh, I'm not so sure that it's gonna give me the performance that I'm looking for, but they are amazing. It's a, it's a wonderful looking shoe. Uh, again, spikeless version. Uh, again, caution is like, uh, here's the new Adidas ones here. Um, this is the S2G model. This is a women's model, but they have really engineered. I don't know if you can really see that. They have really engineered the traction on the spikeless shoe. It is cleverly designed to give you ultimate traction, especially in, um, you know, if it's damp or even in traps. Um, I think they're amazing. It's one, one shoe that I really was surprised at was the Echo shoes. If you remember the street shoes that came out in probably 2010 from uh, that Fred Couples made really popular, these little traction points here had, I don't think it's really see that. They had about, they called it like 180 traction points throughout the whole shoe. And I was actually pretty impressed on how well this shoe held up uh, for performance. Uh, Echo's done an amazing job. So again, when choosing a spikeless shoe, I would just play you know, pay attention to, you know, how much research and design the manufacturers put into it. So, you know, you're going to get something that's going to work for you. But now some people really don't care because they don't play a lot of golf. So uh, spike the shoe, you know, any spike the shoe might do. Uh, for the guys who are looking for that extra performance um, that, that really want it, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with going to a traditional spike shoe whatsoever. So that's my take on spikeless and spiked. Um, I don't think you really can make a mistake between the two. I don't think, you know, before, you know, you used to think that uh, when the technology wasn't quite there, that you'd have to have a spike shoe. But that isn't true anymore. That's not the case. And you see a significant shift. I think probably 85, 90% of the shoes are now that, that are being offered are spikeless. Very few of them are spiked. Um, just for those diehard ones, those hardcore golfers that, you know, that want that extra traction for some reason, mm -hmm. uh, where we still believe that, you know, they may still believe that spikeless shoes are not going to give them the performance of a spike shoe, but that's not the case at all anymore. You see a lot of tour players are moving to spikeless shoes, and, which is amazing. So, so it depends on your conditions. Um, then you can just choose to wear either one. So that's my like two cents on it. And if anybody has any comments or questions, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and your opinions. Hey, Paul. Yes. I've got some questions. You mentioned a couple of the spike lists, one being the Foot Joy and then the Echo. What are, what are the names of, the, of those particular spike list shoes? Uh, th this one here is the Pro SL. The pro and that's the uh, that's the foot joy. That's a foot joy pro SL. Okay. Okay. 
this was uh, this was the Echo. I believe this is the um, this is the Hybrid Three. Well, it's called the Hybrid this, Three. This is the Biome Golf. Just the Biome. Spell that, please. B I O M. Biome is the name of that's is that the Echo one or is that yes, Biome? Echo. Echo. Echo Biome. Mm -hmm. Just Echo Biome. Gotcha. So you're offering, I know you come out with these offers. Um, I get your emails. So are you going to be coming out with these particular shoes that you're recommending and in, in your uh, recent and in, in some recent email to follow up with this? Uh, We're trying. Group? Yes. We got, we got, we got a couple in mind. Yes. Okay. We right. do have a couple cool. in mind. But it was more about, um, you know, what you like what the pant here here's a great example of a foot choice shoe it's a woman's shoe but if you look at that spikeless pattern there is zero traction on there in my opinion but for lightweight and comfort it's hard to beat you know there is some stability in it um it's kind of a slip-on shoe but this is a woman's shoe in particular uh, again but not much traction there whatsoever does that help rick how about you, what do you wear yeah, it does. How about you? What do you wear? What do you? What's your preference? Well, I have a lot of foot joys. Um, I've I've got probably twelve pairs of golf shoes. You know, I have some spikeless or spike spike shoes for when it gets wet, and then the spikeless. But I've never really paid that much attention to the uh, the pattern on the bottom. So that's uh, real good information you're giving. Yeah, it's really important. I think the, the you know, like if you look at brands like Adidas. Puma, um, Foot Joy, which dominate the PGA Tour with shoes, uh, Nike. I mean, you, you look at them, they have the, just, I'm just, just think about this logically, right? And now I'm not saying that um, this is an observation that I had made. You know, the research and development teams that they have is bar none. I've, I've, you know, these are, these are global brands and they have, professional tour players top you know top pga players in the world winning day you know week in and week out on their you know on tour so the tour players want performance they're not going to just settle it because it's part of their equipment so what do you think of those uh, square z shoes you know i don't know enough about them rick to give my opinion on them okay I think there's something um, about them. I know Nick Faldo um, is one of their ambassadors. Um, mm -hmm. They really talk about ground performance. Um, I don't know enough about the shoes really to make a, a, a valid opinion on them. All right. Yeah. So that's amazing. Um, any, any other questions? Thanks, Glenn. I pre uh, thanks, Rick. I appreciate that. Yeah, thanks for your uh, advice. Yeah. I mean, again, going back to the research and development. So they, are, they, they, they have a responsibility to their players, first and foremost, that are going to wear these shoes. Um, even though the players are paid, I get, we get that. But they, in, in order for them to, I mean, it, this is over and above just producing a shoe. On the business side of things, each manufacturer is trying to get market share. You know, in the shoe category. So, you know, they push for, you know, in the research and development team to come up with some things, you know, some, pro some amazing products that are gonna win and capture more market share. And we benefit by that. So the ones that don't have that research and development team, unfortunately, I, you know, my opinion, again, it's, this is only my opinion. They rely on the manufacturer that they go to, to educate them or to come up with some solutions. Um, just to, just to put a, a, you know, a shoe on the market. Just so they can tap into that market and grab some market share of any kind. 
because you can't, you know, any one of us can, can, you know, think of a shoe design and go to a manufacturer anywhere in the world, like Portugal or, or Spain or, or, you know, or, or Asia and, and say, hey, listen, we want to build a shoe. They go to a shoe manufacturer and, they, and they'll give you some designs and some tread patterns and away you go and you have a shoe to the market. But you have no internal re- you know, research and development team creating these products. And which, which brands are those? I know you mentioned FootJoy and Echo. Are those the, the two ones you're... I think, well, I mean, the two things, the, the ones that come to the top of my mind are Adidas, uh, Adidas. Fujoy, uh, Nike, um, Puma, Echo. E- Echo's done an amazing job of comfort. That's important. You know, they've done an amazing job of comfort. You know, they, they are really, uh, it's funny, they are a tannery business. They're what kind of business? They're a tannery business. They have their own tannery. They're, that's, they, they're into leather goods. Okay. So they, they supply a whole bunch of, they supply a plethora of other organizations and companies with leather goods. Oh. And yeah. Um, so they, can, they control the market. So they make their own, they make their own leather, which is kind of cool. But comfort to them is is probably paramount. It's comfort over performance, especially if you're walking. That's real important. Hundred percent. But just yeah. you know, like, you know, think about comfort, right? I mean, out of the gate, yeah, Echo's been an amazing shoe. It's been widely accepted, very popular. Now you take a look at the Pro SLs, right? That tour players wear, or or the two or three sixty that tour players wear. I mean. They play four rounds of golf a week consecutively plus practice rounds. Do you think they're not, do you think they're going to wear something that's uncomfortable? Right. It's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Um, and you can see it on tour. You know, the tour is a great place to see what's, you know, what they're wearing and Granted, tour players, you know, they're a lot more balanced than I am. Um, and they're much better golfers than I am. But you, you hardly see anybody on tour wearing these G4s. And it's the reason for it, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with, don't get me wrong, there isn't anything wrong with this shoe. I think it looks smart, it's different, it's unique, it's compelling. Um, they've done an amazing job with design and styles. Um, so... For somebody who just wants to stand out, this is the, their tuxedo uh, shoe. So, you know, for somebody that wants something different, it's, it's kind of cool. It has a cool factor to it. But, you know, I've had some of these. Um, you know, you wear them for, you know, 20 rounds and they don't look like they were like brand new. They just don't. And that's a shame for a nice shoe, looking shoe like this. It's hard. They're just hard to keep looking this same way for a long period of time for extended period of time. Whereas, you know, whereas something like this, you know, you could wear them for the next few years and look the same thing. It just looked worn in. That's all it would look, look, look like. Which, so, Sam, which one is that you're holding in your hand? This is the Adidas Tour 360 22. This just came out this year. Okay. Yeah. So this is just off the charts good. Just totally off the charts. And, I mean... You know, this is a this is the probably this is the Footchair Premier shoe, which is the spike version. You see a lot of classier looking guys on tour wearing, like Justin Thomas. That's what he wears. Uh, Will Zalteros wears this shoe as well. So you see a lot of this shoe because this comes in some cool mm-hmm. colors. Excuse me, one second. So the guys want to be a little more more flashy. You know, this blue and white toe cap is kind of, you know, a very striking shoe. You know, one that you'd wear, you know, on a special tournament. So, great options. Hey, Paul. Um, hey, Jonathan. Yeah. You look Paul comfy. I'm from uh, Ottawa, Canada. Love it. So, so you're gonna get you're gonna get an LPGA question in a second before the Canadian open. Um, But I guess it's subjective, but how long should a 
should a pair of golf shoes last you? I'm playing three days a week. Yeah. From beginning of May to maybe the end of October till the snow flies. (laughs) Get it? Well, you play three days a week. Do you rotate shoes or you play the same shoes? I'm playing the same shoes. You're like me. I wear the same shoes. I probably get about a, uh, I get a good season out of it. Maybe two. I probably get two. I'm still wearing, um, um, uh, just give me a second. Uh, Cole, I'm going to show you guys something. Just go on my trunk and get my shoes. <clears throat> maybe this. I think I've been. Question. So what's that? Maybe I'm gonna maybe help answer the question with regard to how long something should last. So what I had was at Adidas headquarters in Toronto, and I asked him about, you know, this spike being, you know molded right into the sole of the shoe. I said, well, what's going to happen? How long are these going to last? So they had it rated for 200 rounds of golf. That's where technology has come to now. Wow. <clears throat> oh, wow. That's 200 rounds of golf. I said, well, that's a lot of golf for me. I, I'm in a, in a foot joy. Um, and always have been. I, the, the toe box is really comfortable in those for me. Mm-hmm. And I just, right now, I just change the spikes as I need to. Uh, I buy a box of, I don't know whether there's 20 or 40 in a box. And I just, I keep them there and I, I change. Mostly the heel ones are wearing out. Um, so I tend to change them. But I, I found the tops are beginning to crack on them now. And I think I'm getting to the end of year two. Oh, okay. So this is the uh, shoe that I wear. This is yeah. my shoe. This is the Tour 360 X, uh, XTs. This is from uh, 2020. So this is two years old now. Um, so this is this is the new version of that shoe. This was their previous version. So this happened to be spiked. Um, but I still wear it. I've never changed the spikes on it. So, How do you not wear them out? <laughs> well, they're a little <clears throat> hard, to be honest with you, <laughs> but the traction on it that they have incorporated on it is really, really yeah. good. But durability okay. wise, I mean, two years old, I'm still wearing the shoes. So, a lot of, it lot, is, a lot of miles. Is it just in my head, Paul, that some of the toe boxes on the shoes are, are wider than others? Like I tried on an Adidas a couple of years ago and I just found I, I felt cramped up in the toes compared to my foot joys. Yes. So there is, that's a great question. John. There is a move there. There's been a movement over the past few years and the echoes, the biome hybrids that initially came out were one of the first shoes that have that wider. I don't know if you can see this here. They had the wider toe box up here. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, a lot of the, so this stem, uh, let me just, hold, hold on, let me gather my thoughts. They did, they, Echo did this like innately, right? G- creating a wider toe box. Then there was a lot of movement from teaching, from teachers, golf instructors on tour and top 50 instructors around the country that in order there was a lot of move. Sorry, there was a lot of movement with instructors teaching players to use the ground and to use their toes to to push off the ground. But in a shoe that had a very narrow and tight toe box, you couldn't spread your toes out to give you that uh, athletic, you know, push. Off the, the ground toe. force, yeah. Ground force. So now. For instance, the Tour 360 22s has a significant wider toe box than ever before. So the idea is to have great support in the ankle, nice and snug, but yet have room in the toe box where your toes can spread and get activated and use the ground force properly. 
Got it. So a lot more shoes are moving to a little bit of a wider, wider toe box. Got it. Now we'll we'll flip we'll flip here for a second. Uh, Brooke Henderson, um, sixty nine. I don't know sixty nine top ten finishes in. I think she's got a short career. She's probably only been out there eight years and two majors and she wears Skechers. And, and now I, I know they must be a huge sponsor of her. Yeah. But what kind of golf shoe is a Skecher? <laughs> well, Matt Kuchar wears Skechers. Oh, does he? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it's the guys, I mean, it's not extremely popular, but they're extremely comfortable. I mean, people a lot... You know, Skechers has those walking shoes that, that people just absolutely love, just like walking on a cloud. And again, trying to get market share of an industry, what do you do, right? Sure. And She's always wearing that. Skechers. Are, is, are they custom making her, you know, a special golf shoe for her? <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I've asked okay. that question a lot about, or do they make special shoes for, you know, for guys? And, but I don't think they really do. Okay. Understand they really, they, they don't, I think they find it like, I'm, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a huge undertaking to do that. But you, never know. My you never know. I mean, if they, to do it, who, they probably do. You want to ask something, Rick? I was just saying, one of my good buddies that I play golf with a lot wears the Skechers. He loves them. I, I think they're real, I, I guess, probably because of the comfort. Do they have any of the spikeless that have the good grippy soles that we were talking about? Um, they, they are, we've hacked, we've carried them. Um, mm -hmm. They're good, just like New Balance are, you know, they're good. I just don't know that they have the popularity as these other brands. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Again, uh, that's kind of a business thing. That how do you get market share? You know, you get a couple of players on there, and hopefully, you know, you, you get some brand awareness. Uh, uh, you know, globally. You know. And so the big two are are Adidas and and Footjoy right. and Nike. And you Nike. See, you see a lot of Nike out there. Is I mean, anybody Nike, losing market share compared to the others? What's that? Is anybody losing market share to the others? You know, Fujio had the strongest grip on the tour. I was like almost 65% of the players were wearing Fujio at one time. Right. I think there's, a, there's been a shift. Um, and you see a lot of Adidas and a lot of Nike. A lot of Adidas and a lot of Nike. I, I have never been uncomfortable in in my in my foot choice. I you know you know walk every walk every round and <clears throat> you know in the fall the ground is as hard as can be. So yeah, and that's the beautiful thing. You have choices, right? You have preferences. You know, you prefer like a foot choice look versus a Nike look. They're more of a um, Nike shoes are more of a contemporary look. Um, some people don't want to wear that big swoosh on the side of the shoes and it's just preference and Adidas are more athletic looking shoes, which are more classic looking shoes. So it's just preferences, right? Okay. Cool. What, what's up for your next little video series here? We have a whole pipeline of things. I'm actually trying to get, um, I hope this is going to be good. If I can get him, and there's two people that I want to get. One is Mike Wilson, who is a coach, who was uh, who coached on tour for ten years, uh, and he coached um, he coached Mike Weir. Don't say that I said that. And he won the Masters with him. He's a good he's a good friend of mine. So, but I'm going to see if I can get him on a webinar to help us, you know, play better golf. Easy. And uh, the other one I'm trying to get is Martin Chuck. Martin Chuck. Okay. The, the, the teacher as well. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All right. Let me go grab my Canadian flag and wave it around here for you. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
That's fantastic. Anybody have the questions? Because I know there's some questions in the chat. So, okay. Oh, here's a great question. Does cleaning your shoes after every round accelerate their wear? Yes, they do. It, it definitely accelerates your wear, especially on the, on the uppers. So if you can just imagine, um, yeah, here's a great example. This is what mine looks like that's two years old and I rarely clean them. I'm not that, um, I'm lazy at it. That's, however, um, all the chemicals that they put on the grass can definitely affect the material on the shoes. So cleaning them will give a little bit more longevity to the shoe itself, especially in the appearance wise. And I know that, uh, for instance, uh, there was, but there was a lot, not a lot, but there was issues with echo shoes and the yak leather having a reaction, uh, to some of the chemicals on the golf course that they put on the grass, it would actually discolor it. So that was kind of interesting to know. Oh, street, they're pretty aggressive. Yeah. Uh, more design to function like street shoes. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Does anybody have any questions? I'm just reading some of the questions in the chat. Yeah. So uh, Tony goes, yeah, I agree that many of the golf casual looking shoes, uh, see more of a making a fashion statement as opposed to being more about real performance on the golf course. Absolutely. You can make something look beautiful, but it's not going to perform. Yeah. First bike. Yeah. The, uh, Daniels goes like the Nike Roush shoes. Yeah. They cannot be worn in the street. No, they're not designed for the street. They're really designed for, um, the golf course, but they look, they look, they're absolutely comfortable. How many years should a shoe last you for as providing proper comfort? That is an amazing, amazing question. So talk about the longevity of comfort. This is all going to be predicated on the midsole. That is the, all the area that your foot rests on. So if you think about something that weighs one pound relative to the weight of us and how much uh, force we put on these shoes, when you, it's, it's, have you ever noticed, I don't know about you, have, has anyone ever noticed that when you wear the shoe out of the box for the first week, it's really comfortable. And then after the second week, it's, you kind of, it doesn't feel as comfortable as the very first day that you got them out. What happens is that the material that they use for the mid layers starts to degrade. So it just starts to decompose. It doesn't have the same energy and balance as originally as it originally had, because we put so much weight and force on it. It just starts to compress and it doesn't return back to the, its original condition. Adidas kind of had a solution for that in the, in the bounce technology, if you see that here. It almost looks like styrofoam, but it's, um, it's an unbelievable technology that they came up with where it, it's, they use it as an energy return system. So you can, you can compress this material and it bounces right back. You can compress it and comes right back. And the durability of this comfort from the day that you get it, from the time that you stop using the shoe, you'll have the same comfort as you did from day one. So this is not apt to degrade like something that's, you know, very inexpensive. That's why it's important to pay attention to the research and development manufacturers put in the shoes. Because it looks great, feels good out of the box, and then out of you know a week later or two weeks later, it just doesn't feel the same for some reason. Hope that answers that question. And I'd love to hear what, if anybody has experience of anything of that nature. How do you second call the shoes? 
how do second quality, somebody asked about how do second quality shoes hold up compared to paying a bit more and getting a first quality shoe? Um, I'm not sure how you mean that question. So I can share my experience specifically with this. This is a little secret. We've discovered that FootJoy has what's called the blemished golf shoe. And the blemished shoe is only cosmetic. We have sold, I'm not trying to impress anyone, but we've, we've sold thousands and thousands of blemished shoes. And it's very rare that we find a blemish um, that is that we that is very noticeable to us there is no blemish regards to the construction of it in any way shape or form it just could be um that the, the stitching was a little discolored or there was a little uh, scar on the shoe that they could not sell it as a brand new shoe so the blemished shoes from foot joy are an unbelievable deal and that we invest heavily in, when we can get them in blemish shoes. So yes, but second quality, I'm not sure really what that rep, what that means by other manufacturers. I've never seen second. I've never come across second quality, or have, have ever been offered second quality shoes from manufacturers. Because I yeah, because I'm always concerned that there is something uh, functionally wrong with them that we don't want to sell. And it'd be a, a bad buy for, for you guys. So hopefully that helps that answer that question. Yeah. On blemishes. Yeah, that goes. Thank you. That's exactly what I was wondering. Yeah, blemish shoes, 100%. 1,000%. You can't go wrong with a blemish foot charge shoe. Um, any other questions? Is it, is it, have you guys found this helpful in any way? Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. I will I, I will say when you talked about the midsole and the shoe breaking down, uh, my my youngest daughter owns an orthotic business and she would raise holy hell with me if I did not put orthotics in my golf shoes from the day I buy them. Um, she just it's like dad, this is what I do. I serve, you know, people in the military. I serve golfers. I serve figure skaters. She said, if you're walking that much, you ought, you ought to have them in your shoe right from the get go. Yeah. It's so, so cool. yeah. And she does, she does say that, you know, foot joy and that's the one primarily she's dealt with. They do an amazing job with their insoles, but after a while they do break down. And so she just pushes me right to go to orthotics. Yeah, so it's interesting that um, so a lot, a lot, like a lot of the insoles that most manufacturers use are just absolutely useless. They they just decompose and degrade. You can, you can just like out of the box, they're nice and fresh. <clears throat> now, interesting enough, um, Adidas has partnered with Ortholite on some of their insoles. So Ortholite insoles. So they partner with yeah. them, put insoles in their shoes. It's just fascinating. Technology's changed over the years. A hundred percent. It's interesting. I'm going to share a quick story with you guys. So I met this gentleman about uh, four years ago. His name was Adamo. Um, it, he was into prosthetics. He built the blade prosthetics. You ever remember that Olympian that ran? Yeah, we don't want to talk about him anymore. No, no I get it. But he, <laughs> he, well, he built that those blades for him. Right. Now, where I'm going with it, that he is an eccentric engineer. So that material actually was used on the Apache helicopter blades. Okay, it was, it was a proprietary material that he used. And Apache uh, went to him, the, the company that owned uh, Boeing, I, think, I can't remember if it was Boeing or, went to him because they had an issue with the blades on the helicopters that was causing a little bit turbul too much turbulence. So he crafted um, 
this material where wind could go through, kind of go through it, but keep the keep the blade stable. It was just amazing that it could just be a like some fraction off. Where I'm going with this is that because he was in like the prosthetic business and making blades of that nature, one of the key elements, and we were going to make orthotics because they're with that material, because that material, we have a video of it somewhere. Um, we would, you could put a 20 pound weight on the orthotic because it had that little bit of an arch to it. You could put a 20 pound weight on it and it would bounce right back up. Where, you, where we took another orthotic and we put the same weight on it and we would just degrade, it would just decompress. It wouldn't just have that energy return system. So it was fascinating how exactly that, you know, shoes or hat, now they're incorporating that, that energy return system that we need, you know, to walk and stay healthy. Good point. So here's, a, here's a, somebody says, um, says, hey, Paul, I've used the same pair of foot joy contour 540519 other shoes for about 10 years. I, for, I unfortunately wasn't able to find any current shoes that felt as comfortable. So I actually recently bought a less uh, used pair of the exact same shoe on eBay. Oh, good for you. That's amazing. See, you have a preference. You like it. That's wonderful. But I would strongly suggest, um, you know, Tony, venture out there. You'll, you'll find something, that, if not as comfortable, even more comfortable than the contour shoes. Natalie, we're on a webinar. My webinar. Yeah. yeah. So that's great. Any other tips and tricks? Any other questions? This has been amazing. This has been awesome. I've learned a lot too. Yeah, this is a perfect seminar for the uh, us uh, shoe junkies. Yeah, you're right. I own a lot of pairs of shoes. I have to wear because I have to test them out. Um, I was just testing out the new Code Chaos shoes um, from Adidas. Um, I'm really impressed with the traction that there's for a spikeless shoe of what they're doing. These manufacturers is just unbelievable. There's no reason almost to go into a spike shoe. I think the difference now, I think you see some of the spike shoes just look more fashionable, more catchy, like these foot joe premieres. But most of the other ones are all, are all spikeless shoes. Uh, I'm late to the conversation, but what do you think of Echo Shoes? I think Echo Shoes are absolutely brilliant. I mean, they're unbelievably comfortable. Um, there's a lot, they've, they've done a lot with creating different traction on the soles from this, these little nubs that you see here on Echoes. They've moved to more, uh, what's called some of them you see, they have fins on the bottom of them, and the fins are, are different depths and positioned on different areas of the shoes to give you the most traction when either you're swinging. So when your weight shifts, they wanna make sure you have the correct traction in those areas. So Echo's done an amazing job. Duca da Cosma, uh, unbelievable. Uh, we are planning to get a significant amount more of those shoes. I think that's gonna be an up and comer. I don't think they'll probably be as strong as like foot joys of leaders of Nikes, but for those who are, want something that is a little bit more different, unique, um, it's in, of high quality, um, made in Europe, uh, Italian company. Uh, Duca de Cosma has won uh, awards for some of their shoes. So I think they are brilliant. They do an amazing job. They really pay attention to a lot of detail. I uh, missed the beginning. I got for any mornings. Do sweeper. I always wear. Uh, I always use spike shoes for the morning time. That's awesome. A lot, a lot of people do. Uh, I love the foot joy spike shoe and enjoy uh, spikeless as well as wear them all day long. Yes, I have a wear 
I have uh, used Bion this year. How are you liking those Bions, Tony? I love that. I love those. Those are great. Those are fun and comfortable. Yeah, you know what? The, you? They are. Uh, they're a lot of fun. And uh, problem is, is I wear those all day too. Uh, I've gotten rid of the Crocs, you know, just for uh, yeah. bebopping around town. But I wear them out, so I got to buy it extra pairs. But uh, my friends love them too. So, and uh, they can see me on the golf course from uh, you know a couple holes away. Ah, that must be Tony, because because yeah. of the shoes. So it's fun. Yeah. When they first came in, when they first came here, um, when they first launching, uh, I test them out. They're pretty cool. I mean, it's a great, it's a cool looking shoe. I, I wore the flamingo ones, the flamingo pattern ones, the blue yeah. and the blue and white ones. Nice. Pretty cool. Yeah, pretty I got red, white, and blues, and white and orange. Yeah, you wear socks, yeah. or sockless. Uh, Instagram I had these, the uh, the sock company called the Visa Sock. That uh -huh. uh, I tried them, and honestly, I wore them. I love them. What it, what's, and, uh, what's it called? They're Invisa socks. Invisa socks. S O X. Invisa socks. X. I, I'm gonna wear them right now. Because I have uh, found a pair of socks that I need for like uh, that's like a no show. That yeah, that's what they are. They're a no show, yeah. and they uh, they recommend that you wash them before you wear them. Kind of like oh. shrinks them up, and there's like uh, uh, like a tack on on the heel part of it and they honestly they don't come off it's really it's, they don't slip yeah it's n in n i n v i s a s o x put it in the chat if you don't mind so uh, yeah no problem I, yeah. i've always been looking for a pair of like no-show socks that are really good yeah. yeah these are the best i've found you know other than buying the ones uh you know in bulk you know do you, do you have those buy on shoes by handy by chance yeah for yeah, people yeah. that don't know what a buy on shoe is, yeah. you'll know it's what great. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a second. I got to uh, bear with me. I wore them in the, here in Arizona, man. I tell you what, I mean, like, they're cool, but I, I wore them sockless and I paid the price. Yeah. I have too many pairs of golf shoes and uh, I buy a lot from you. And uh, uh, because I love the Foot Joy ones. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to figures i don't have them right here handy okay i'll look in another spot sorry <laughs> and, for, uh, and for everybody that's on we're we're, we're we're working with true links shoes we sold them um when did we sell those sort of shoes six seven years ago when they first came on board no 2011 10 years ago okay First came on board. They have evolved immensely as a golf shoe. For somebody that has it, was that's looking for a zero gravity shoe, right? Um, I think that's a good option for people who, for some of us that lean forward, where we have a, an elevated heel. Uh, True Links has that zero heel. That can, yeah. yeah, those are the shoes. I love that. Yeah. And then there's the, yeah. So I wear out the heel. I'll take. I'll, I'll sit down so I don't move around. Okay. But, uh, uh, Paige, if you can hear me, try to find that uh, Invisa socks. Uh, if you have, if you can find their website or something like that, you can put it in the chat for everybody that may want to try to grab a pair. So yeah, these That's are great. Great boating shoes. Yeah, and the you know the bottoms are, are pretty good too. Yeah. Um, I experienced my first slip uh, this last weekend playing. Did but you? It was, had nothing to do with uh, you know the the ground is just you know where I was on an incline. Yeah. So. That's fantastic. I love that. Okay, so we got it in the check. Invisasocks.com. There you go for everybody yep. that's looking for a pair. A shout out to you guys. That's from Tony. That's just not from me. Tony from Connecticut. Tony from Connecticut. Yeah. So what's your go-to golf shoe besides Bion's? Uh, I have the Foot Joy, uh, the Spike shoe that I love. Uh, I, I, I like to walk. Um, and the, those are the most comfortable by far. In fact, I got a pair that are 20 years old, old leather ones that I just can't throw away. The classics? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, black leather. They're freaking... Plain, simple, just nice shoe. Yeah. And I can't, 
you know, the screws are bad in one of them. So I can't, uh, I don't have, a, you know, can't put one in there. Gotcha. So, yeah, you're going to see uh, next year, uh, 2023, you're going to see these shoes evolve. That's a beautiful shoe. Yeah. They're going to have the wingtips going to come out. They're going to actually come out with a spikeless version. We, I mean, they do have a spikeless version now as well. Yeah. Um, they have a they have a lighter one. A yeah, how much? Is that? These ones are, I think, they're like two hundred bucks. Yeah. Okay. I mean, very reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Very extremely reasonable. You know, full grain leather, just beautiful texture. Probably light as hell too, huh? Yeah, they're from what they used to be. Yeah. From yeah. Them. I mean, that's why my my black ones are are heavy and stiff, but yeah. I still love them. And they're all, you know, especially the ones you have have the leather sole. Mm -hmm. Right. They had the uh, foot check came out with a shoe. They had the icons, which were, you know, the classics and the icons. And then they had the foot joy black series, mm -hmm. which was an evolution of the icons, which had yep. uh, a cork insole. We're off the charts. Yeah. Oh. Mm. It's just amazing what they've done. All right. That's great. Well, if there are any other questions that anybody wants to ask, happy to answer them. I'm on the hot seat. Doesn't even have to be about shoes. Anybody want to ask anything else? Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. Great socks. Oh, greatsocks.com okay good canadian company sell canadian made products yeah well thanks i love that how about i have a question for some of you um are there any brands that you don't see us carrying that you'd love to see us carrying that you think would be important to you guys or valuable to you What shoe would you recommend for hot weather? My feet seem getting hot now. Yeah, well, I get that. I am in Arizona, so do not wear black shoes in the heat. Um, anything that is breathable, that has a fabric other upper, that it has some kind of a mesh uh, is, is great. However, when you have a lightweight shoe that has a lot of airflow through it, uh, you might sacrifice some performance. So just keep that in mind. So it depends on which one you want but definitely um, something that's kind of more fabric or knitted uppers would, would do a lot better in the heat. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining. I hope you guys found this helpful. It's been uh, a great time that we have to uh, share with each other and ask questions. So that's been wonderful. And all right, uh, hopefully uh, we've had some questions. Yeah, and uh, we'll see you guys next Friday. We uh, hopefully we'll have some special guests. So we're we're, we're working on a few uh, things. Uh, last uh, the last webinar, I mentioned that we would. You know, I'm hopefully I'm trying to get Kim Braley from KBS Shafts on here. He's a friend of mine. Um, I'm trying to get either Mike Wilson or Martin Chuck to come on, uh, help us with our golf games. I think there's a lot that we can learn from these people that, that from these tour players that, 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 that teach that have taught on tour, um, some small little nuances that we don't even think about, um, that have really helped my game and things that we like, for instance, for an example, tension, um, was one thing that was pointed out to me that I never even thought about ever. Like how much tension we, that I use when I'm left-handed. So when, when I transition, how much tension I have in my hands or in my forearms, um, which causes havoc, you know, on my swing and the outcome of the shot. So that was one of the things that we had to, and the way that we, and the process that he took to how to pay attention, it was quite fascinating. And I think it'd be very helpful to a lot of people. And cause and effect as well. What causes, uh, you know, what causes a hook or slicer? What causes us to hit a good one time and then horrible the next shot? So, and then we are going to continue on uh, 
Um, I'm not sure if you guys saw one of the webinars with Dr. Don Wood um, on the psychology of golf. Well, that was an absolute incredible video. If you haven't seen it, uh, Paige, you might want to just link it on YouTube there to, to anyone who wants to watch it. I can't tell you how much this has changed my game in the, in the mental process of it. Uh, I was out, the other, he, he, so, but he's just come out with a book. He hasn't officially launched it yet. Uh, I got, the, he, he sent me a copy for me to read and, and it's called the 50. It's, it's about the 15 club, which is our mind and how we can use our mind to play better golf um, very quickly. And it was funny. I was just testing out this theory and I had gone out golfing uh, last week and it was day one of this uh, practice of just on the mental side. And I shot 50 on the front and 42 on the back. Just used in this simple process. It was just unbelievable. And I enjoyed the game. I enjoyed playing that much more that day. I wasn't frustrated with my shots. So that's a great video to watch. If you guys want to, uh, if you are struggling mentally with the game or you get frustrated, like after you hit a bad shot and you try to hit the next one and it is just as bad. So uh, this has helped me in a, a lot. Well, again, I want to thank everyone. Have yourselves a wonderful weekend and uh, we'll see you next Friday. Take care, everyone. Thanks, Jonathan, and all that you participated.